What's stomping, Kaiju viewer? Why, it's you, of course. Welcome back to Kaijutopia, the home of the most electrifying Godzilla stomp motions. I'm Tom, and in this video, I'll be breaking down Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong Issue 2. If you're new to the story, be sure to watch my previous video covering issue number one. Okay, so continuing where we left off, Godzilla and his monstrous friends have invaded the DC Universe. In the last issue, Godzilla arrived in Metropolis, interrupting Superman's proposal to Lois Lane. What's interesting here is Superman doesn't immediately fight Godzilla, instead he attempts to talk the Great Leviathan down. That's definitely something Superman would do. Unfortunately for him, Godzilla is also being written in character, and he does what Godzilla does. He fires his atomic breath first, and never asks any questions later. But Superman delivers a left hook. Mothra be thy name, Superman vs. Godzilla is on. Superman worries a fight with Godzilla might reduce Metropolis to rubble, it would, so he flies in close to remove Godzilla from the playing field, only to get swatted away by Godzilla's tail. Superman is sent flying through several skyscrapers, which reminded me of Superman's final fight against General Zod, you know, at the end of uh, Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. In an office space on the other side of the city, Superman meets the Flash. The Flash reports the Justice League is on its way. Superman doesn't say Godzilla by name since he wouldn't know, you know, what his name is, but what what he does know is Godzilla is immensely strong and he flies off to stop him from destroying his town. Wonder Woman, Hawk Girl, Green Lantern, Supergirl, and Green Arrow are en route, but before they reach Metropolis, they receive an update. Three more giant monsters have been detected. Scylla is attacking Central City, Flash is turf, Kamazots is flying over the skies of Gotham City, which is not the first time Gotham has encountered bat monsters and Behemoth is stomping towards Themyscira, which is the home of Wonder Woman and the Amazons. The Justice League has no choice but to divide and conquer. They do this by calling in the entire superhero community. As they would state on the Justice League Unlimited show, this is an Omega level situation. Justice Leaguer Cyborg informs us Hawkgirl is heading over to help Superman contend with Godzilla. The Flash, Green Lantern, and Supergirl will go to Central City to stop Scylla. Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, and Wonder Girl will face off against Behemoth, but who's protecting Gotham from Kamazots? Batman, of course, and he's not alone. Meanwhile, Wonder Woman and Green Arrow are on their way to Themyscira when they suddenly fly over an island that shouldn't be there. And they're absolutely right because that is no ordinary island. It's Skull Island, the Kingdom of Kong. Wonder Woman has to meet up with Wonder Girl, so they agree to have Green Arrow investigate this mysterious place. After all, it's not the first time Oliver Queen's been deserted on an island. We cut to the Legion of Doom headquarters, where Black Manta and Cheetah are monitoring the chaos. We learn Toy Man wish the Titans and supervillains back, and some of them are like Gorilla Grodd are on their way. However, Lex Luthor is missing. It's right here Black Manta confirms what I said in the previous video. Toy Man has in his possession the Dreamstone, which is arguably the most powerful plot device in comics. With it, he wished Godzilla and the Titans into the DC world. And if I'm being honest, I'd totally do the same thing if I had a mystical stone that could grant any wish. Suddenly, we learn Lex Luthor is alive and he's back in his office at LexCorp. Outside, Godzilla and Superman are locked in mortal combat. Luthor instantly suspects Toy Man, but knows he needs to retreat to his bunker in order to assess the situation. Speaking of situations, things are becoming dire. Superman is trying his best to lure Godzilla away. Earlier, he noticed Godzilla seems to be drawn to him, as if he's the reason the Titan is here in the first place. That is only scratching the surface. Monster vs. Godzilla's singular purpose is maintaining balance in the world. 
but this isn't his world. This is the DC universe. The DC universe is extremely dysfunctional. Case in point, it has the Joker. Godzilla thinks there's something wrong about this world teeming with superheroes and supervillains. Just then, Hawkgirl whacks Godzilla with her mace. Keep in mind, Hawkgirl's mace is made of nth metal, which has a litany of special abilities. It's a pretty big deal in DC Comics, right up there with Marvel's Vibranium. But Godzilla isn't impressed. Hawkgirl's hit barely made him flinch. Superman says they need to get him away from the city, which tells us Superman can't do this on his own. When Superman and Godzilla's fight started, it was dusk. Now it's nighttime. That's a little over an hour of fighting. In Gotham, Batman Incorporated is having a hard time managing Kamazots. Conventional weapons do nothing. Jason, to Jason Todd makes things worse by shooting the Titan in the eye, which ends up backfiring because Kamazots targets highly populated neighborhoods. Luckily, Black Canary is there to save the people in danger. Earlier, Batman deduced Kamazots is a sonic monster and has a pretty good idea on how to defeat him. With Cyborg's help, the superheroes assemble a sonic amp fire on the spot. Black Canary steps up to use it. To those of you who don't know who Black Canary is, simply put, she's not only one of the most skilled fighters on the planet, her superpower is a devastating sonic scream. At point blank, Black Canary's amplified sonic scream strikes Kamazots. Those of you who've read Kingdom Kong know this is similar to how Kong and Monarch ultimately defeated the Bat Titan, but this plan is far more effective. As Kamazots crashes into Gotham Park, Batman walks away like a boss. You've heard of superhero landings? Well, superhero walk-offs are a thing, and Few heroes are as good at, it, at doing it as Batman. Back in Metropolis, Superman and Hawkgirl are striking Godzilla left and right. As the heroes try to formulate a plan, Godzilla's swipe catches Hawkgirl off guard. Her unconscious body is flung through the air, only to be saved at the last minute by Shazam. Formerly known as Captain Marvel, not that one. Shazam is the mystical equivalent to Superman. Okay, so Superman and Shazam versus Godzilla is a fight I never knew I wanted to see until now. As Hawkgirl would no doubt attest, Godzilla is faster than he looks. They need a plan of action, and fast because things are literally heating up. Godzilla's atomic breath clashes with Superman's heat vision. We got ourselves a classic beam war. Shazam notices the two are at a standstill. Still, to tip the scales in Superman's favor, Shazam lands on Godzilla's head and shouts, Shazam! When he does this, the mystical wizard who bears his name sends a bolt of magical lightning. This magical lightning can either turn you into one of the most powerful beings in the world or turn you back into a vulnerable human. Yeah, Shazam's plan does the latter. However, Godzilla does get a face full of Shazam's lightning. This isn't the first time we've seen Shazam do this. Uh, when used strategically, it can be an overwhelming force. It's taken Superman down in other comic book storylines, but was it enough to stop Godzilla? Well, Shazam has turned back into Billy Batson, a young boy who seems quite pleased with his plan. Superman doesn't think highly of his plan, however, and when an ominous blue glow washes over them, the Man of Steel tells Billy to quickly turn back into Shazam. But before Billy can say Shazam, Godzilla's atomic breath envelops them. Superman uses his body to completely shield Billy from harm, but in doing so, he takes the full force of Godzilla's lethal heat ray. As Godzilla's rampage continues, Billy is mortified standing over Superman's burnt body. That's, that's right, Kaiju viewer. Godzilla torched Superman alive, and now the world's greatest hero is down for the count. The issue ends on a cliffhanger, and Great Caesar's Ghost, what will happen next? It'll be interesting to see if we find out later that Godzilla's heat ray has kryptonite-like radiation. Otherwise, this is a pretty big deal. Superman's capable of flying through stars without getting so much as a blister. And the fact Godzilla's atomic breath stalemated his, uh, his iconic heat vision, which could cancel out absolute zero temperatures, is 
mind-bogglingly strong. Thank you for stomping by. I'll destroy you all utterly later.